Hey, Mailbag fans, it's your favorite day of the week. It's Mailbag Monday. Nothing clever to say here. Let's just get into it. All right, let's start with the biggest one. It, well, it might say something underneath there, but whatever it is, I'm not going to dig for it. It's probably all wise anyway. back here really one one neodymium magnet in all that packaging really how big is it it looks like it's about half an inch where's a ruler that's Speaks real language here. Clearly it's a magnet. It is... Is that one... Ten, 12 millimeters thereabouts by... Three or four millimeters. Okay. Why did I buy one magnet? Hmm, this was so long ago when I ordered this that I can't find the actual listing except for in my history. Uh, the listing's gone. The view seller's other items shows nothing. Increasingly suspicious. Anyway, one item sold by all underscore the mo or most best. And it's... 12 by 3 millimeter magnet lot strong cylinder neodymium magnet fridges power supplies etc 99 cents look at the picture lot magnet lot i got one magnet for 99 cents i don't often get ripped off by ebay or ebay sellers this time i'm pretty confident that I did get ripped off. Not happy about it. At least it was only 99 cents. Alright, let's see if there's anything better in here. Let's try this. Expansion board module. That looks promising. Oh! LED module. Seven segments uh, by eight LEDs. And if I'm not mistaken, this is the Max 72. Yeah, it is. It's the same Max 72 18, I think it is, that's powering that, that thing back there. Um, let me just zoom in and look at the chip here quickly. Sorry, Maxim Max 7219. You see that? Sort of. So yeah, this is kind of an LED driver shift register sort of a thingy. They've got a couple of modes. One mode, which you've been watching in the background for quite a while, is this here. It's a series, you get a, a serial data and a clock coming out of say for instance an Arduino Pro Mini um, into the data in and clock in of the first module and or data in chip select the clock and then on the other end of the module you have power pass through data out um, clock and ODA, which I'm not quite sure what it means. Um, it's pretty straightforward to use. The, the library handles all of it. Um, I'm not sure if I can cascade these type with this type. Not that it matters, because I don't think I would anyway. If I was going to do that, I'd use different pins and run this off a different set of pins. Max 7219 LED dot matrix 8 digit digital display dot 056 analog tube anode tube module for Arduino. And looks like you can 
yeah I select either the four digit or the eight digit version I selected the eight digit version it was a whole door 76 from Alice 1101983 free shipping of course hmm. not sure why I ordered other than it was really cheap maybe I'll need uh, I don't know I probably just wanted to tinker with a different kind of display uh, compatible with 5 volt and 3.3 .3. Uh, for logic, but it does need uh, 5 volt VCC. VCC and ground should not be reversed so as not to burn the chip. Good advice. It includes the module, a straight 5 pin header, and a 90 degree 5 pin header. Yes, it does. What do we got next here? Another one where the post office has covered up the lies. A breadboard! You can never have too many breadboards. I have many of them stacked over in the corner here, a bunch that still have projects on them. So this one is the same size as these ones, though it's not compatible with the little walking things on the edge. It is compatible with these ones though. No it isn't. Okay, I've got another different shape of breadboard. That's fine. It is what, 30 long by standard width. Um, let's see if it's one of these ones that's really hard to plug stuff into. Where's those header pins? Or if it's... Oh, that plugs in nicely. That's good. Oops, spoke too soon. Oh, that goes in pretty well. Some of these um, I, I found and... Um, a few other people on YouTube have found that some of them don't plug in very easily. Um, the metal work inside there is not shaped very well to accommodate it. It's more like that than, than like that at the top. Um, but this one, oops, well, that didn't go in quite so easily. Try that again. Okay. It's reasonable. I'm sure it was inexpensive. It probably was an auction rather than a buy it now because that's how I've been acquiring breadboards. If it was cheap and it wasn't an auction, I probably would have bought several. So I'm guessing it was an auction. Let's go find out. I guessed right. It was in fact an auction. White 400 holes experimenter board. For some reason it shows as a clear one, but it is in fact a white one. Uh, experimenter board, breadboard, circuit board, boards, hot sale 2017 from Kingdom 66, who I don't think I've ordered from before. Anyway, four bids, I got it for $1.06 Canadian or 84 American pennies, since they still have pennies. Uh, I'm sure there's really not much to say about it. It's a plain old breadboard, and it's always a handy thing to have. Next up, we have one LED module LED. That's plausible. And I can actually see this. Huh? Oh, it's a NeoPixel ring. Oh, that's slick. Or uh, WS8211 or 8212. If you prefer not to uh, be branded, because of course this isn't a branded one from Adafruit. This is a generic one from China. Hmm. I think we have time to play with this. Give me a second. I'm going to be right back. Okay, I just went to uh, grab some supplies and quickly throw one of the demo sketches onto, onto a random Arduino. And I'll just quickly strip up some wires and toss them onto the back of this ring. And I will test her out here. So, as I think I mentioned already, you need three pins on these things. Data, minimum three pins. You need data in. That one. 
you need a voltage, 5 volts. Here's that one. This is obviously just a temporary test job. Um, I'd do something more pretty, maybe even with header pins, if it was for real. Um, and the third pin that you need, you always need on pretty much anything. Well, is ground. Oh, that's horrible. Let's try that again. There we go. Ground. Okay. And we'll get that loose piece of solder out of the way. Now then, data in my demo sketch is on pin three. So zero, one, two, three. I need the orange wire five volts, because why not? Um, which is up there, V in ground five volts, V in ground ground five volts. Plug in. Come on, plug in you. There we go. And I made this wire a ground, which goes right beside it. Okay, so I'll plug him in and see if it works. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's pretty. wonder what I'm going to use this for. Who cares? It's pretty. I like it. That's horribly flared out for the camera, isn't it? How can I mute that a little bit for you so that it's not causing you grief? Eh, whatever. It's blinky lights. Blinky lights are good. I don't know why I can never remember the part number of this thing, but it is in fact WS2812 8-bit 5050 RGB LED lamp panel round ring LED driver development board from Shanglong C and I did get it at auction uh, for $1.33 Canadian with free shipping. Again, it's a fairly standard item. It's not much to say about it. Uh, 32 millimeter diameter, 6 grams, between 4 and 7 volts. All standard things. I like that so much I'm just going to leave it out here while I finish this. Is the uh, the test uh, or demo sketch that I've got on it says that it uh, calls itself a hundred so I'm guessing there's a hundred different patterns on it. I'll just let it rock and roll there. So the last thing is something resistor it says. It's, oh, it's a big old pack of resistors. Now then, did I order a big package of the same, or are these an assortment kit? Looks like an assortment kit. Oh, and they've got the values stamped up in the corner. That's nice of them. The last kit of assorted kit of resistors that I got, it was just handwritten on the tapes by some random person that worked in the uh, seller's shop and of course it was illegible so i had to go through and measure them all these ones are actually labeled so i am i think going to do a token measurement on them now then why would i order a bunch of resistors if i already have a whole bunch of resistors whole bunches of resistors that you saw in my getting organized video well allow me to show you these ones from the previous assortment that I bought are all these kind of bluish crap background their bodies these ones are older style um, they are carbon film these ones I think are some other technology Theoretically, they claim to be a little bit better tolerance. I'm less concerned about that. These ones are much easier to read. Um, do I have 100Ks in here? No. I have 10Ks, though, which is going to prove my point, actually. Let me zoom in on my hand and these resistors. 
So, which one is easier to read the color code on? Even if you're not half colorblind like me, which one's easier to read? I'm hoping everybody's pointing at the right side of the screen right now. That's why I bought them. That's the only reason I bought them. 600 pieces, 30 values, quarter watt, 5% tolerance, carbon film resistors, resistance assortment kit set, blah, blah, blah. From RR0493, I paid $3.38 for those. Now then, the as I was saying, these are carbon film resistors. The other ones, the bluish ones, are, this is just a random listing, they are metal film resistors. Um, they're also quarter watt. They claim to be 1% tolerance, whereas back to these guys, they're 5% tolerance. I'm not doing precision instrumentation. Most of my circuits, I just pull a random value that's close enough for rock and roll. Um, or I'll do a quick thumbnail calculation, but not bother with, you know, with exact precision. I'll just go as close as I need to. Um, this is fine. I can, I can almost read the colors on them with my wonky old eyes, as opposed to these crappy things, which, as you saw, nobody can read. I know I said I had five things for the mailbag today, but it's gone really fast. Some of them weren't worth a deep dive. So I'm going to open one last one that showed up fairly recently in a horribly torn up package. Uh, it says it is a printer heat sink. Don't want you to feel short changed on these mailbag Monday videos. You get a full value for your money. It is, in fact, two heat sinks. Two heat sinks for, looks like TO3 transistors. If it is what I remember ordering, that's what it is. Hang on for a second. Um, yeah, those are for TO3 transistors. You may remember a while ago. I got these LM338 adjustable regulator modules. And I'm pretty confident that at the same time I ordered these guys. They just clamp on there with a bit of heat sink goo underneath them. And bolt down. And that allows these things to handle, well, probably almost twice as much current as they can just stand alone. I'm, I think I was hoping to get up to like three or four amps without any significant heat because I wanted to be able to power the lights above my bench off a different power supply. Right now it's on, they take five volts. Um, no, they don't, they take 12 volts. And the power supply that they're on is a, a 12 volt laptop style power supply but I don't have very many of those. I have tons of 18 volt laptop power supplies. So I was planning on just building a linear regulator to drop it down and smooth it out. That's my plan. That's why I ordered these. Let's see how much I paid for them. Two pieces, aluminum, gold seal, transistor, iron, radiator, cap, heat sink, TO3 package. Well, wow, that's a whole lot of things that don't actually describe it. Uh, it is, in fact, a TO3 heatsink. It is made of aluminum. There are two of them. It has no gold seals or iron radiator caps. Um, from Pe Peninsula Home. Almost said that wrong. A Peninsula Home. $2.15 free shipping. Those are relatively costly but it seems to be what the going rate for them is. And that is the contents of today's Mailbag Monday. Disappointed in that. Very much disappointed in that. Quite happy about this. Useful. 
interesting thing to dick around with. Always useful to have. And a project. Pretty good. I will talk to you later. Thanks for watching.